the um, the reason that I went into architecture was when I was in college, I analyzed uh, um, different professions, and it seemed as though uh, many of them got into a kind of a rut. And uh, since then, I've found that if you really are a creative thinker, you can get, you can make any profession a, a creative one. But some, many of them tend to <coughs> get into a specialty or a rut. So I picked architecture as a uh, profession which is non-ending. I didn't, I didn't want to be uh, in, at a dead end when I was 50 years old. So now that I'm over 60, I'm still starting. So the uh, design process is, uh, 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 you know, it's a very involved thing. In fact, <coughs> it takes uh, till you're about 40 before you have uh, any kind of control or enough knowledge of architecture and all the things that are involved to 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 really start to design. Uh, you may you may make a, make a whack at it when you're a student, but it's uh, very superficial and kind of uh, empty or one-sided whack because it can't possibly include everything that's necessary in a in a total design. So my design process is, first of all, uh, the reason for architecture uh, to me is uh, for the human being. And so uh, it's, a, it's a shelter and uh, an environment primarily for human beings and not merely um, uh, a thing to get out of the rain. It's, uh, it's a functional space which contributes to the emotions, the psyche, the uh, life, and should be ideally uh, a, a living work of art which is uh, of, of enduring quality, in fact, timeless. And all of these ideal things are, are what we try to achieve. And, uh, uh, the, so the design pr process includes all of that, plus all of the technology, plus all of the building business, plus all of the monkey business and the finance business and the et cetera. <laughs> so that's a kind of a start <laughs> on the design process. Well, it, uh, in, in practicing this way, uh, uh, gradually uh, the more often you're able to uh, get together everything involved, uh, which is what I try to do. I get all of the requirements of the, of the human being or beings and the site and the materials and everything, and I uh, try to conceive of an idea which is, uh, uh, what, which I think is the most appropriate all together, and when, once I get an idea, a total idea, that that is the design. So, but I mean, sometimes you do get this idea fairly soon. Sometimes it, often it's a real sweat. It takes weeks or months before you resolve something that you think is a worthwhile idea. Sometimes I try maybe half a dozen different approaches to some problem and uh, then it becomes even more difficult because uh, it's hard to select which is uh, the, is the most uh, totally valid uh, so the the best design that I've done has been have been cases where I have seen the the whole thing as a whole thing almost the next day and conceived of a of a whole idea for this, whatever it is, and uh, then then it's uh, pretty easy from there on to carry it out into preliminary working drawings, etc. But the main thing is to have a total idea.
In design, in our office, we do not seek an aesthetic. We seek uh, logic, honesty, and truth. And through this process, we hopefully achieve a poetry. Architecture, all architecture has been, from the beginning, a search for the lightening of structure. And we work in structure. So historically, we work the way the first architects worked, truthfully expressing the systems and the structure utilized. Our search is for intrinsic uh, solution, not extrinsic effect. In many architects today, I think most of them are, are more concerned with form rather than intrinsic solution. They play with shapes. The essence of architecture is the interaction and interrelation between mass, space, plane, line, volume. The purpose of architecture is to enrich the joy and the drama of living. The spirit and the soul of architecture is its truthfulness to itself, which means its respect for the ethics of, the, if, of its materials and structure. Um, we work in our office with all the technology that's available to us, and we feel that the expression of this technology gives technology, all the technology we know at that moment is what really gives a, a building the validity to exist in our time. My friend, architect Lou Kahn once told me that a painter can paint square wheels on a cannon to express the, the uh, futility of war. And a sculptor can carve the same square wheels, but an architect must use round wheels. Lucan was emphasizing the limits of architecture. True, great architecture is art, and the art in architecture is an immeasurable quality. But also, great architecture is primarily technique, and therefore, a building must clearly reflect the order the discipline, the measurable aspects of its being. The moment form becomes arbitrary or style, it becomes something other than architecture. There must be some underlying force that motivates the forms of architecture. Form by itself does not exist. That was one of Mies van der Rohe's favorite sayings. Architecture must certainly be more than an expression of an idea. And the real art in architecture is not arbitrary stylism or ethereal symbolism or innovation for the sake of innovation, but rather the extent to which a building can transcend from the measurable into the immeasurable, the extent to which a building can evoke pleasure and profound emotion, the extent to which a building can spiritually uplift and inspire man while simultaneously reflecting the logic of the technique, the technology, which alone can convey its validity to exist. Architecture is more than just building design. It deals with more than just a specific single project, and architects should, and I 
particularly feel that it's a diverse field uh, which deals with uh, planning, urban design, the total environment, uh, and political, social, and economic issues as well. Uh, the work that I've been involved with for about 15 years has dealt with these issues of the city and of uh, the urban scale. However, during this last 10 years, when one talks about the individual building or the single building or the single groups of buildings or the single design, most of my work has dealt with uh, construction systems and the house and housing and how various types of uh, modules and fabric prefabricated and fabricated design can be used to solve low cost and moderate house uh, problems. As far as the way I deal with design process totally, um, like most architects, one has to deal, in, and I feel very strongly that one should deal with, with all aspects of uh, the decision-making process. And these uh, involve uh, such elements naturally as the programmatic ones in which the architect has to deal with uh, the client's problems, um, their prejudices, their desires, their wishes uh, as a key aspect uh, of decision making. Then, of course, uh, the site, uh, the uh, construction systems, the structure, the environmental uh, restraints, uh, the various kinds of experiential uh, aspects that the client will uh, be involved with and other people will uh, experience as they move through the space are all uh, very key to the design decision-making process. Now, taking all of these elements together and trying, in my case at least, I feel that they should be kept as much uh, as consistent as possible and as equal as possible in, in, in the, the, the final product. Uh, my attempt is to uh, handle all of these aspects. And it is obvious that uh, as one goes through this problem-solving decision-making process, uh, most of the decisions are made uh, through the, the weighing and the uh, interlacing of all of these elements, trying to take into account uh, each and every aspect. Sometimes architects deal with one aspect in lieu of another or emphasize one area more than another. Uh, my own feeling is that the most successful work uh, should really deal with all issues and not just deal with either the environmental space or deal with uh, just how the building looks from the external aspect, but that it should work in, in all areas. Along with this, of course, uh, I feel that I have felt that uh, uh, I've wanted to deal with the construction system uh, in, a, in a very specific way. And this is what I was talking about earlier in, in order to solve uh, problems that I feel were, were necessary to be solved in the low cost and moderate cost housing uh, area. And going back about 10 years ago, uh, I became very much involved with uh, a single system that I wanted to explore and have continued to explore uh, through the, the private residence. Well, I've always been a pro-technologist. Uh, I'm spending a great deal of time at the moment uh, trying to comprehend and analyze and understand uh, the role of technology as it relates to uh, environmental issues. It's a difficult one because most of the data are not in and, and it's a one that I think architects are going to have to look at very seriously in the future. I've always wanted to work with uh, modern day technology. This has been uh, a desire of mine uh, for as long as I've been an architect, yet because of the cost considerations and uh, the economics of most projects, 
this has not been possible. So wood became a material that I used because it was the most economical way to work other than, say, straight studs and plaster. Uh, wood was then the next least, the most expensive or least expensive way of working. Uh, I would prefer to work with uh, the kind of technology that I think our society is capable of, and I still look to the future uh, in this way. I I studied at the uh, University of Michigan and had the opportunity to uh, uh, pursue many different careers, uh, uh, starting in engineering and then uh, uh, pursuing the uh, design field, going into sculpture and painting and a little of architecture before I, I really focused my attention onto the field of architecture. And this came in an unusual way, I was passing through Chicago and had a chance to see the work of uh, Mies van der Rohe. His, uh, the preciseness and the, and the beauty of the work that, uh, that uh, he had accomplished in Chicago as well as at, at IIT was very impressive. And from that point onward, I, was, uh, I had focused my attention uh, to the field of architecture. Uh, upon graduating, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Rafael Soriano, who uh, worked in the, in the same kind of idiom as uh, Van der Rohe, using the modulated exposed steel structure in a very simple, direct way. Uh, Soriano compared his work uh, to the uh, music of Bach, the, the kind of, of uh, precision and preciseness, the uh, restraint that he uh, uh, incorporated in his work, and the, the use of structure in a very direct way was a, pro a very prominent aspect of his uh, approach to his art. And uh, this is the kind of background I came from. Uh, basically, in, in those days, it was, it was very difficult to, for uh, someone who was starting his practice uh, to have the opportunity to, to uh, uh, work in this, this kind of idiom. Uh, so that my early practice was focused on, on work in the, uh, in the uh, uh, California vernacular, the stud and stucco idiom. And it, it somewhat forced me into, a <clears throat> into more plastic forms, uh, into forms that uh, uh, were freed from the uh, uh, structural modularity of the Van der Rohe tradition. Uh, I think this was fortunate because it, uh, it somewhat recalled the, the, uh, the training that I had at Michigan in uh, sculpture and art and the, the freedom that is uh, is allowed in the, these fields. And uh, I believe uh, the work that we're doing now and that we've done in the past number of years uh, reflects a combination of the Van der Rohe tradition uh, of a simple um, uh, structural modularity and the freedom and uh, uh, pl plasticity of the uh, Corbusier tradition, which is uh, reflected <coughs> um, hopefully in some of the work that uh, we're doing now. Uh, materials have always been a, a, um, a special interest to me. Uh, uh, materials which uh, are part of the structure of a building and also become the, the finished envelope or the finished uh, 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 exterior and interior uh, uh, surface of a structure. Materials such as uh, concrete and uh, masonry work. Uh, now these materials have a, have a, a, uh, a human tactile uh, structural quality, a, um, a scale, a human scale that, uh, uh, that is uh, 
that is very uh, visually apparent in the, in the final uh, accomplishments. Uh, there, is a, there's a, there is a quality that um, uh, I remember in uh, an aesthetic course in Michigan that uh, this one professor described as Einfühlen, or the, the, the sense of seeing the, the way the material is produced the way a work of art is produced, seeing the actual movement of the artist as he's um, developing the, the, um, uh, the work before him. For instance, the, uh, in the paintings of Van Gogh, you can, you can actually see the texture of the, uh, uh, the brush strokes. You can, you can see the movement of his arm as he was making those brush strokes in the final work. Well, in, the, in that same sense, if you see uh, brickwork, and the, and not only the individual brick, but the way the brick is laid, and course by course, uh, demonstrates the, the, the actual human movement that, that was uh, incorporated within the process of building this building. In the same way, uh, dealing with uh, concrete, you can see the way that uh, forms are put together, the carpentry in forms. Uh, we like to use especially uh, board-formed concrete because it does demonstrate that kind of scale and texture which is, uh, which is quite tactile and, and uh, pleasant uh, uh, to view and demonstrates the process through which this structure was achieved. Uh, <clears throat> these materials, uh, brick, masonry, uh, uh, concrete, uh, glass, uh, wood, heavy timber construction, form the, the basic palette of, of most of the work that we've been doing, where the structure is apparent. Is the site, to me, has a great deal to do with, with the final result. Uh, uh, I generally find that, that particular problems associated with, with a, a design project, which you normally would think of as stumbling blocks, end up being uh, often the thing that gives the result uh, its character and, and uniqueness. Um, I tend to think of the term that uh, Louis Kahn uh, has used, which is, you know, what the building wants to be, as being a, a very, very succinct and meaningful phrase. I, I find that popping into my head quite often. Um, if you really analyze all of the the influences of the surroundings, the site, the needs of the, of the immediate environment and the needs of the building in relation to the environment, the building just almost tells you what it wants to be. And uh, some, sometimes a solution just pours forth. Um, I think that, that the most important step in the design process is, is to have a goal to have some concept about that becomes the generator for a solution. Um, unfortunately, uh, when you're working on more, as I say, more superficial kinds of projects, um, the, the, the generating factors often become things like, well, you know, what kind of envelope can I use that, that's going to look good or, or uh, capture people? Um, but in fact, I think the more solid your concept is in terms of what your, your overall goals are, what you want the building to do to people, um, how you want the building to affect people, the more, 
the better the, 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 uh, the concept, the better the goal, the better the building. Well, I, for a while I seem to be doing a lot of uh, work in, in brick. Uh, it's such a wonderful material. Of late it's become so expensive that uh, um, I've really begun thinking less in terms of materials and more of form. Um, to the extent that it, in some cases, it really doesn't matter what the material is uh, in, in terms of working out the solution. I'm not thinking of the material uh, while I'm solving the problem, but uh, uh, I would say there's no, uh, I mean, the choices are getting, are becoming more limited, uh, I would say, in terms of what, uh, what can be afforded, let's say. But I think that uh, uh, Southern, being in Southern California gives us uh, an opportunity to work with some very mundane materials like stucco, uh, which I think has marvelous possibilities. Yes, it does. I, that is a, uh, you know, architecture to me is, is so inseparable from life. Um, we talk about the value system that, that creates the architectural uh, results, the architectural forms that we have. And uh, it's, to me, it's, uh, you just can't separate the whole body of, of, uh, of man from, certainly from, from architecture, from what man builds, and from the, the conglomerate of, of these buildings, namely the cities. They are just, they are expressions of our value systems. They are indicative of what's really important to us. Um, and when the cities get better, it will be a sign that our values are changing. Everything that, that I've seen since I was born to today has influenced me. Um, I'm very eclectic, and I steal ideas from everybody. And, uh, and synthesize them. And I find that uh, I've picked on everybody. Uh, early on, I, I was fascinated with Soriano, and I went to uh, Wright and Harris, and uh, but my interest in, in art somehow kept me uh, involved with, with what artists were doing, at least the contemporary art, the living artists were doing. And uh, so I'd say a great deal of my, my influence has come from, from painting and sculpture. Who? I don't, you know. Ed Moses has been an influence in my, my work, more in, in relation to attitude uh, about what's relevant and what's irrelevant. Uh, the idea, he reinforced in me the notion that we had to seek our own individuality, that we could, it wasn't just given to you, you had to work at it. and. Uh, Part of the way of working at it was to closet yourself up and and, and uh, not get a lot of vibes from the outside. It was sort of to evolve in your own head, in your own fantasy. Um, I think that Bob Irwin influenced me a lot in the, the way I look at light and the way I work with light. I was fascinated by the white paintings and the blushes. And, the illusionary qualities of, of that and how you couldn't hold an image or how you could create a space where you could walk into the walls before you, you saw you were walking, you were there. Uh, I, was, uh, I ran into Carl Andre's work a long time ago and I was fascinated with that and media I thing that. I was into. But, uh, the work of Donald Judd fascinates me. Uh, 
it's sort of using cheap materials and getting a lot of response out of it. And I guess that's minimal art, since he's one of them big minimalists. Uh, I'm not just interested in minimal art, though. I'm not solely a... a I, don't, I don't think that's my whole thing, although it appears that way in some of the buildings. I'm more into the illusionary qualities of a building and creating a sort of a visual richness without it being there. You almost have to trip over it. I guess it's minimal in that sense. Probably a regional architect. Uh, not as apparent, maybe, as others, but uh, I, I love the industrial sections of this town. I love the, the freeways. and. I like the kind of lifestyle, living. And I think that's got to reflect somewhere in the work. Uh, I think my attitude about detailing, hanging looser with it, not getting so finicky and precise as, as we used to do. Uh, just becoming the editor, getting the job shoved into motion and then becoming the editor that stands there the day the guy's putting up the drywall and saying, hey, wait, stop, leave that open or quit painting that spot or something, you know, just sort of fine-tuning it on the, sp on the spot. Uh, detailing, uh, hanging loose a little more with it is, I think, in a, a Los Angeles or California or Western thing. So I would say I'm, I'm very regional. I, I don't always like to admit that, though. The, um, the reason that I went into architecture was when I was in college, I analyzed uh, um, different professions and it seemed...